Disclaimer. I am not a mental health professional, and nothing in this video should be taken as legitimate medical or psychological advice. Hello and welcome back, my dear exiles. I'm here with a slightly different sort of video from my normal fare. Rather than one of my usual jaunts through the world of games, failing left, right, and center, instead I'm here today because I want to have a bit of a chat, let's say. There's something that's been on my mind a lot lately because of certain happenings, or more to the point, not happenings, in my life. I want to talk to you about that wonderful, transcendent thing called creativity. How it can go from being a blessing to a curse, and what to do if, like me, you found yourself similarly stricken and emotionally hamstrung by something that once brought you joy. As ever, if you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you felt like leaving a like and or a comment, doubly so if you felt inclined to subscribe, as these things are what keep small channels like mine alive. Now, before we get to discussing the issue itself, I want to provide some context, just to show you that I know what I'm talking about. My credentials, if you will. I'm in my early 30s, and for literally as long as I can remember, I've wanted to make a life and a career out of being creative. At various points, I've wanted to direct films, write and perform songs, act in movies, write books, and, as is currently the case, make YouTube videos. To have a career that I never wanted to retire from, basically. To be recognized for my work. To one day have someone come up to me shake my hand and tell me that something I made had inspired them, changed how they saw the world, in the same way that my heroes and the things they created did for me. This type of fantasizing was probably at its worst when I was in college, which was also when I was in a band for a number of years. At night, I would lie awake in bed picturing my little group playing huge stages at sold-out arenas, jet-setting around the world to perform in every country that would have us, the thrill of hearing the roar of 10,000 fans screaming the names of our songs and lyrics. In my spare time, I devoured endless reams of rock and roll biographies, carefully studying the lives and habits of all the musicians that I loved and envied, hoping, praying, that I could turn these tales of excess and adventure from a fantasy into a blueprint for my own life. And so it went. We rehearsed twice a week, we played shows at every shitty dive in a 50 mile radius, we did a few out of town gigs, we wrote songs, recorded demos, and so on and so on. I put up with a lot to hold on to that dream. The personality clashes, the late nights, hangovers, the aching muscles from hauling gear up and down staircases, and most of all the constant disappointment from getting on stage, looking out past the lights, and seeing five, maybe six people, most of whom were there because they were my friends. I don't know that we ever really had any legitimate fans, anybody who wanted to come see us just because they liked our music. After about four years, I called it quits. I walked away from the band and onto my next hopeful enterprise. But something happened when I left. I didn't just put away the dream of being a rock star. I put away music as a whole. It didn't happen all at once, but slowly, surely, it became less and less a part of my life. I found myself picking up the guitar ever more infrequently. To paraphrase Mark Marin, it had become an emblem of my inability to achieve something I'd wanted so badly. Whenever I picked it up, I was bombarded by reminders of my failure to succeed. I stopped listening to my favorite artists because every time I heard those songs that had, at one point, been so important to me, all it did was remind me of the life I didn't have. I'd reached for the brass ring and found that no matter how badly I wanted it, Wanting it wasn't enough, not nearly enough, to allow me to grasp it. Just trying to make your dream a reality is, in a word, insufficient. The world has to agree with you. And it had soundly rejected me. It was the same thing that had happened with my previous efforts, and the same thing that happened with my next attempt, becoming a writer. 
I have a novel that I've been working on for literally over a decade, sitting half finished in my Google Docs. It grew out of a series of vignettes that I wrote during slow periods at my night job when I was in college. Little literary sketches that I scribbled down because it was a fun way to pass the time. But eventually, I hit a point where the words stopped flowing easily, the tap dried up, and trying to get even a sentence or two out just felt impossible. This thing that had once been one of my dearest loves, exercising my control over the English language, writing just for the fun of it, no longer held any joy for me. Every attempt to come back to it resulted in the same stalemate, the same butting up against the wall that had somehow appeared between me and my capability to produce anything. And it wasn't until a few months ago, when I started making videos, that I finally realized what the problem was. In essence, it was the dream, the fantasy, that desperate, all-consuming need to achieve something via my art. The same thing that had, in the first place, led me to put so much effort into my creative endeavors was now the thing that was stifling them. I wasn't playing music anymore because if I wasn't going to make it as a musician, then what was the point? I wasn't writing anymore because instead of writing for fun, writing because I love doing it, writing for myself, I was writing to finish a book and get it published, to make money, to fulfill some nebulous goal that I had convinced myself was the only reason to pursue creative practice. By hanging a weight of expectations and goals on my creativity, I'd made it far too heavy to pick up at all. Does this ring a bell for you? Maybe you found yourself in a similar position, constantly starting new projects, getting a little ways in, and then hitting a wall, damned by anhedonism when it comes to things you used to enjoy, and worst of all, letting that sudden inability to create affect your mental well-being in general, finding that trying to do things you used to love is dragging you down and making you depressed. Needless to say, I can relate. So. Now that we've established what the problem is, what is there to be done? How do we fix it? What's the solution? Well, first off, let me reiterate that I am not a mental health professional, nor am I proffering this as counseling of any sort. All I can do is tell you about my own experience and what I'm doing to try and change the way that I relate to these issues. With that in mind, what changed? Well, as I said before, I created a YouTube channel and started making videos. But how's this different from all those other things? How am I sidestepping the issue of self-sabotage and avoiding the loss of inspiration and motivation? Well, it all comes down to the impetus behind the effort. Not what you're doing, but why. When I started this channel, I fully came into it with the expectation that I would never get more than a handful of subscribers, never have a video that got more than 100 views at most. I wasn't making videos as a way of getting famous or making money or any sort of lofty end goal like that. I came into it with an amateur mindset, and I use that word in its original sense, meaning a person who loves something. I'm making them for no one but me, because I enjoy doing so. The creative act is an end in and of itself, nothing more. That's the difference. I do this because it's fun. If it stops being so, then, well, I'll stop and I'll find something else to fulfill me. So that's what I recommend. If you're suffering from these same issues where your creativity is concerned, examine the context that you've placed your creations in. Ask yourself, and be honest, why you're doing it whatever it might be, and who you're doing it for. Are you trying to write a book, make a game, run a YouTube channel, write songs, whatever, for yourself? Or are you weighing it down with a bunch of expectations, a bunch of conditions for failure? I bet that if you're having these same kind of issues that I discussed, then you'll find more than a little commonality there. And if you're fed up with being frustrated by it, then the only thing I can really suggest is that you try an exercise in recontextualization. Don't try to make progress by main force, by pushing through that wall on willpower alone. You're just going to strain something, wind up in a cast, or worse. Relax. 
let your hair down. Roll those tense, overburdened shoulders. Shrug off that perceived mantle of responsibility to your goals and just create something. Something for you and you alone. Something that only exists to exist. Something that you made for the sheer joy of it because you love doing it. Try that. See if you find yourself running into the same wall that's hindering your progress elsewhere. I bet you'll see a difference. I know I did. Well, folks, that's all I have for you for now. If you made it all the way through this little meditation on handling issues with creativity, thank you very much for lending me your time and attention. As I said, this is a new type of content for me, and I have no idea if it'll be of much use to anybody, but I do hope that at least one or two people will take something helpful away from it. As always, if you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you felt like leaving a like and or a comment, and doubly so if you felt inclined to subscribe. If you do subscribe, don't forget to ring the bell so you get updates. Take care until next time, and good luck out there with whatever you're working on. This is November Bravo. Over and out.